say we need to reverse a superficial mindset and replace it with a deeply joyful mind, ready to discover wonders and be amazed everywhere we look. And he said we need to set ourselves on a conscious quest to cultivate a spiritual mind that is fully alert to the glories of God. I thought of the Queen of Sheba, who was fully alert to the glories of Solomon's kingdom, to the wonder of it all. It, she had no breath left in her. She was speechless. She was overwhelmed. She was on this kind of intentional quest, this conscious quest, her mind fully alert to what she was seeing. The psalmist had that same kind of mindset. Psalm 111, for example, verse two says, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them, full of splendor and majesty is his work. There's a sense of wonder, a sense of awe. I love those places in the Psalms, you see it some in Job, you see it in other places of scripture, where it talks about the wonders of the Lord, and then it mentions rain. I mean, how is rain one of the wonders of the Lord? But as you go and study what it takes for rain, how it develops and how it comes on the earth and, the, and how it ties in with everything else in the creation, it is wonderful. But we don't stop and ponder and study and meditate on and delight in the works of the Lord so often because we're moving too fast and I'm preaching to myself here when I say this. Moving too fast, got my nose in a book, got my nose in my laptop, got my nose, my eyes on my smartphone. I'm just missing a world of wonder, the natural creation, the wonder of God seen in the lives of his people around me, the wonder of the unseen things, of love in a new marriage, in a relationship. I don't want to miss the wonder. I don't want any of this to become ho-hum. It would take our breath away if we would stop to look at and ponder the amazing wisdom and works of God.